it is. Yeah, so if you can see, it's either shows both of us, you, or just me. And that's usually when I just switch it to, like, if you're talking and stuff like that. All right. Cool. All right. I'll do the intro, my dude. <clears throat> Welcome, SciFry, to uh, my talk show. It's called Late Night of Rebel. That's me, your host, that one Rebel. And uh, like I just said, you're my guest for tonight. So how you doing, my man? I'm doing good, you know, it's chilling Thursday. Yeah. Uh, enjoy my day off. Uh oh. been playing a fuck ton of uh you know, just games. My new Modern Warfare's out, new Luigi's yep. Mansion's out. Yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Smash three. Brothers patch. Yeah, yeah. It's been a fucking good week for games. Yeah. Actually really good game. Like it's unfortunate I don't actually have any of them. Because I don't own, like, a Switch or anything. I'm broke mm. as fuck, so I can't afford any of those games. I'm stuck playing this free-to-play game. But, um, there's, yeah, a lot of good games. Oh, Death Stranding came out? Or today or tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I need to buy that for my PS4. Yeah. And that's coming to PC, too, like, next year, I think. Like, early next oh, year. Next year. Come on, man. I hate when, like, games take it, like, six months later. I mean, Red Dead just came out, too, for PC. Mm-hmm. Well, Rockstar always takes forever with their yeah. PC ports. Like, GTA V took years to come out on PC. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is, like, the modding community. So, people are thinking that there's going to be, just like with GTA V, it's going to be an RP community for <laughs> Red Dead. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe there'll be a return. Yeah, it'll just see how, how similar the coding is to GTA V, how quickly they can mod it. Yeah, and then you see the return of Kenny K. Cohen. I'm like, what's up, bro? I'm gonna rob your bank, bitch. <laughs> or whatever, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see um, what people mm. do with it. But um, Some of the modded GTA servers are, like, crazy. The stuff that they do. Yeah, um... Like, what's... they mod in, like, whole game modes and stuff. Yeah, what's the what's the most popular RP one? Uh, no Pixel? It's crazy, like yeah. Grow that's weed like the big stuff. RP server with yeah. all the big like streamers play on. Yeah, you grow weed and you be a comp and you, I don't know, rob banks and shit. And you have mm. to, you have to like do mini games on like the the banks and stuff. You have to like yeah. <laughs> you have to play good at like one of those it's like, crazy one of those like good car hero or something like Osu or some shit. <laughs> it's just like you have to do an Osu thing mm. and break into the vault. It's like what the hell. But um. Anyway, um, so my first question to you, Cypher, this is an interview. So my first question is, how did you get into VR mm -hmm. chat? Like, how did you end up here initially? Uh, let's see. I played VR chat a couple times, like back in like before, like the big boom in VR chat, which was like January 2018, was like when the big boom happened. I think I saw a couple like smaller youtube videos on it and i'm like oh i'll try that out so i played it in desktop for the first time around like november of 2017 played around it a couple times you know had fun and then of mm -hmm. course when the big like boom of vr chat happened that was like oh man I, I just happened to be in a position to be able to afford vr so it's like oh hell yeah like there's actual like games for vr because vr has always been something that's interest me i've always yeah. kept up on the development ever since like the first oculus dev kit um, but, like, seeing, like, VR be, like, a thing that has, like, actual games on it and is affordable, relatively, uh, I had to jump in on it. Yeah, because, like, for the longest time, um, I felt like, like, when VR first came out, I thought it was just a gimmick, you know? It's just like, uh, because they had the same thing. Yeah, it was like, mostly tech demos. Yeah. It was a tool for developers. And even in, like, like the first Oculus <laughs> to come out was the Oculus developer kit. Yep. And they, even in, like, the early 80s and stuff, they had, like, the Virtual Boy and, like, some fucking whack-ass mm -hmm. VR systems to, like, burn your eyeballs. But then um, the Oculus for, uh, came out, Oculus Rift, like, the first dev version. I just thought it was a gimmick. I just thought, like, this isn't going to be a thing yeah. for... I think the first dev kit was in, like, 2010. Yeah, it was a long that time ago. Out. Long, long, long time ago. And it was just, like, really just indie stuff and i never cared for it mm -hmm. and then obviously as the years went on I, I knew that it would take a long time to develop actual stuff for it because nobody's going to care about vr seven years ago obviously in the more recent like two three years has become a lot larger yeah vr is uh very quickly becoming a like emerging technology yeah 
Like but, even compared to like when the original Vive came out, and now we're on the uh, the verge of the Vive Cosmos and the Oculus Quest and the Rift Rip 2.0 and yeah. the Valve Index. Yeah. What's funny is that the most selling VR system is actually the PS4. Um, oh yeah, it, because you hook it up to your console, it's like so accessible. Well, they sell it also with the console Just too, as VR. like as like a package mm -hmm. deal. So like it's it's worth it to get it, and then you just play like Resident Evil Seven. I don't know what else is there. I think there's like a a program where basically you can uh, take a PSVR and a webcam and convince your PC into thinking it's like a Vive, and then you can play PC VR games on a PSVR headset. <laughs> what the heck? That's some Jerry Regan right there. Yeah, I, I've seen because I've heard somebody in VR uh, play with their PS4 controller. I don't know how they did like hand moments. Probably like mm -hmm. probably didn't work too well, but like they could at least see, you know, use the headset at least. That's that's the best part about VR is that the fact that it's so like open source with everything, and like people can like mod like, uh, like the first time the the Quest came out when the Quest first came out, somebody uh made a program that would basically allow it to stream games from your pc to your quest yeah so that you could have untethered with no loss of quality uh and then oculus shut him down and then announced yeah. the oculus link cable like six slots later yeah exactly because i remember some people in the quest were talking about how they could they jerry-rigged it so they could play other like non because like when you have an oculus quest you mm -hmm. can only go in the oculus store that was it you cannot buy any other games that wasn't on the store or play exactly. them or whatever. So some guy figured it out and be able to play anything he, he, that they wanted. And then eventually the guy shut him down and like tried to sue him or some shit like that. I was just like, you can't, no 30 party. There yeah, they said I'm a yeah. cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, man. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg. Which is insane money. because like uh, Valve and HTC have always been like super open with like people modding their stuff. Like the Valve Index even has like just a. USB port at the front that isn't even used for anything official. That they just opened it up for modders. Yeah. You have an index, right? Uh, I have a, a Vive headset and index controllers. Oh, I'm okay. probably gonna upgrade to the full index kit soon. Yeah, I just have the Oculus Rift. I still have the same Oculus Rift from last January, January 2018. It's mm. falling apart, so it's almost two years old, and it's like dying. The headphones that don't work. Yeah, I bought my Vive uh, pre-owned, and uh, it's some of the like the head straps are not like sticking the Velcro as hard. Yeah, it's starting to wane on me. Oh, my my foam fell off, like it's gone, and then um, I just mm -hmm. glued it. I, I super glued it back together. I got that Gorilla Glue super glue, where if you like touch that shit, you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> so, oh it's man, it's on it's on there permanently. Yeah to the headset it looks disgusting like there's scum marks all over i have really... one of those like uh replacement face covers that's like made out of like the fake leather stuff instead of the foam yeah yeah yeah. because it's those. better for when you sweat in your vr yeah i feel i do feel like um playing vr for a long time like i have to have my fan on so if you hear like any buzzing or whatever it's my fan mm -hmm. like i just sweat like it's just it's just like a freaking heater on your head so yeah, well, you gotta, yeah, that's why I always, that's too, people fucking sleep in VR, you're sleeping with a TV attached to your face, I always tell them that's crazy. Yeah, well, for me, it's just, I can never do it, because it's just uncomfortable, like, it's just a brick on your head. Yeah. I'd rather sleep in my bed. You got a big, big old TV display strapped onto your head. I don't know, some people like that stuff, man, I don't know, some people like to, uh, I don't know, get immersed i don't know they wake up they're like oh i'm a hot girl mm. now <laughs> i wake up and my lover's next to me i don't <laughs> i don't know i i really don't know my dude but some people are into it i'm not some people like to watch other people sleep in virtual reality oh, that's shit. when it gets real weird wait can you stream that <laughs> i'm <laughs> streaming <laughs> they're creeping from the closet this is this, this a little crack like there's hear heavy breathing oh, they are finally gone to sleep <laughs> ASMR. And that's what I imagine. I've, every time I see one of those fucking sleep streamers in the VR chat category, mm -hmm. I just imagine like 50 some people just doing that, watching that in their room. Hey, they're into that stuff. I'm waiting for one of them to get partnered. Let me know that <laughs> Twitch is into that stuff. Oh my god. Ugh.
What'd you do to get partner? I uh, I, I, I stared at sleeping people from my closet, <laughs> breathing really heavily. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. <laughs> anyway. We have public rooms in VR chat where people sleep too. Oh yeah. Like, I don't, um... like even if you sleep in VR, like I can't imagine doing it in a public instance. No, I've seen it. Uh, what's that one world called? It's like a sleeping world. It's like a. I don't know, I, I went to a public and there, there's people like yeah. literally snoring and then someone I was just like hey what's up guys and then some guys like yo shut up they're sleeping and I'm like are you sleeping in a public world dude I can like join like with a cancer avatar mm -hmm. and just like fucking wake him up if I, if I was a dick I would but I was just like what are you doing it's like yeah I don't know I, I... VR is in, in a weird stage right now yeah well for me like if you sleep in a public world like you're just sleeping with random people so like imagine like you in real life just sleeping with a random person <laughs> it's not your friend yeah it's like what we bonded by sleeping like you together. wouldn't sleep in a public place IRL unless you're a hobo or something you know, you know? homeless that's about it only people, yeah yeah so well, we're not homeless. We have VR. <laughs> we're no. all clearly very wealthy. Get, no, give a homeless person VR, and he'll be, he'll be like, finally, I can connect with people. I mean, the quest can use uh, be worked anywhere, so he'd just be like, mm. fuck this. I'm not in my homeless shelter. Just get the VR on. Hey, oh, hey guys, and I can be what I really become. When I went to TwitchCon, I saw somebody on the on the stairs outside of the convention center using an Oculus Quest to play Beat Saber. What the fuck? It was incredible. You see them waving the around? The man just didn't have a care in the world. Yeah, he was just waving his arms around playing Beat Saber. And I was like, this guy. This guy fucks, Oh, this dude. is peak VR. We're entering the future. Yeah. That's the future. Is everyone's gonna be strapped, uh, trapped in like that? Uh, my mm -hmm. next question I have for you is, uh, how did you create your OC, your character, at least the one that represents you and your channel, your brand? Uh, I started. Oh, okay. So for me, finding like a model to use in VR chat was a long process because I found one that I liked, but mm -hmm. it was a very common model. So I would meet people, and every time the response would be, I have a friend who uses that avatar. So I went and I searched for a long-ass time for a model that nobody used. I found, like, a, a base model, and then that just sort of developed, taking the same, like, textures from that base model going through different bases. And now I have this one, which is a custom base model made by uh, my friend Guile. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a, that's a struggle. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Is like finding stuff that like you know, did did you have that somebody nobody else has? Um, obviously, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm the only one who has this model, and like that's the, <laughs> that's it. But I had to pay a lot of money for it, so you know, yeah, it's kind of. I think he has a public version of this model uh, in his world, but the textures are all unique to mine. So oh, okay. if you have the public version, it doesn't look like me. That's good at least, yeah. Because I always hated that, like, whenever I had, way before this model, like, I remember using some models and people being like, oh, I've seen that before, or, you know, it's just like, or, like, some people be like, I'm the only, because, like, you get a lot of people who do, like, Hank Hill or whatever, and, like, they're like, I'm the, I'm the mm -hmm. original Hank Hill, dude. It's like, okay, dude, I've seen, like, 20 of you. Calm down. Or, like, Rick from Rick and Morty. The original Kermit in VR chat. Yeah. No one else can have a Kermit avatar in the same world as me. Exactly. Uh, did you attend any conventions or TwitchCon this year? I think you did. I think I saw you in a picture. I went to TwitchCon yeah. this year and TwitchCon last year. That's the only conventions I ever been to. Oh, okay. Um, how was TwitchCon, my dude? Like, how was your experience? TwitchCon was great. Oh man, Just compared to last year like san jose like it was a nice city at all but it sucks in comparison to san diego san diego was beautiful like this all the sites and the city and mm -hmm. the people was just incredible can't wait to go there fucking next year i'm so glad they booked that venue for multiple years yep uh, and of course year. twitchcon is nice uh, it was very it was very nice first twitchcon i went to because it was my very first convention and being partnered at twitchcon is basically a vip pass Exactly. Which was very nice. Yeah. Um, you, you, know, get to, you get to go to the partner lounge. Next. 
Exactly. The partner lounge was great. Uh, uh, this this year they had an entire fucking floor for the partner lounge. You went down an oh, escalator the... into it. What the fuck? Yeah, the San Diego Convention Center is fucking huge, and they didn't even use all of it for TwitchCon because that's the place where they have like Comic Con that has like a million people, and I think TwitchCon oh. was like forty thousand. Okay, that just means they have so even that like expand. small bit of the building that they no. used. Yeah, they was so it was so like there was so much room, and Sa San Jose was so cramped by comparison. Mm -hmm. TwitchCon was amazing. Got to meet people, some people for the first time, meet other mm -hmm. people uh, for the second time. How was uh, the VR chat meetup? If you went to that. Uh, I went to that. I didn't stay very long because it was a very large uh, group of people at the VR chat meetup. I sat under a tree for most of it. I mean, you gotta stay out of the sun, so. Yeah, it was very hot in San Diego. And I'm a fucking northerner. Like, it just snowed up here, like, today, and I'm, like, fine in a t shirt and jeans. Yeah, it's not here too. So I'm, like, I, I live in the cold. Mm hmm. So, the heat doesn't agree with me. Well, the reason why I asked about the VR chat meetup, because, like, a lot of people said, like, this year, because they did uh, TwitchCon, the first one at TwitchCon 2018, and then mm -hmm. they did it this year, and it's, like, three times as large or way bigger this time around. It was super big. Did you recognize a lot but of I people? I saw, like, a big crowd while I was walking over there. I was walking over there with Lele. Because mm -hmm. uh, we were just in the convention center, we decided to walk to VR chat meet up together, and we saw this fucking huge people. We we're like, "There's no way that's the fucking place, right? There's no way that's VR chat." <laughs> and then we got closer. We're like, "No, I think that is. That's like a big ass crowd." And <laughs> yeah, it was. There was like a fuck ton of people out there for VR chat. That's that's crazy. Cause um, I I've, I didn't I never attended any Twitch cons yet, cause I just don't have the opportunity. It's mm -hmm. busy and shit. But I do plan on going maybe next year or sometime in the future. And um, I don't cause I, somebody was streaming there. I don't remember who, but there was like one or two people that were streaming it, and I was just watching. I was mm -hmm. just like, holy crap! There's like literally like probably like 400, 500 people that went. Mm -hmm. And like the funny thing is, I I. I didn't recognize like a single person because I, I don't know what the, hell, what the hell anyone looks like. You have to like look at their badge and be like, mm -hmm. oh, that's who you are. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I, I remembered some people from last TwitchCon, what they looked like IRL, and then like people in pictures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely the badges with your name on them helps a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if some people are like hiding their badge. Like, no, you can't know who I am. I'm secretly uh, mute, bro. What the hell? My immersion's ruined. So, I did meet Oathmeal at TwitchCon. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Oathmeal actually yeah, made an announcement nice. they, they... that they're gonna be talking soon. So that's mm -hmm. gonna be interesting. Hug that. I told Oathmeal first thing you're gonna say, I'm like, "What's up, brother?" <laughs> I just think that'd be funny. I'm like, "What's up? What's going on?" Oh shit. Mm. But um yeah um TwitchCon I guess I didn't attend but I I saw like a lot of people uh, you know some of my friends and stuff like that from Midnight Central showed me like, mm -hmm. pictures and stuff like that all the parties um did you attend any parties? Uh I went to the partner party apparently the Discord party was the same night as the partner party yeah uh, and that was uh, apparently a better experience from what I've heard but I went to the partner party the partner party was nice it wasn't uh, as crowded as last year because they didn't allow plus ones oh okay That's last good. year was the only year that they allowed plus ones into the partner party mm -hmm. and last year's TwitchCon was so packed mm -hmm. like the partner party but it was nice yeah uh, yeah, because I, I heard stories of, like, the Discord party being, like, a lot better. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people told me, and then, um... Yeah, just, just... well, the Discord party allowed plus ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. That That's why a sense. lot of people yeah. went. What about, um, this, like, house parties? Uh, we had one house party with, uh, Raffle Gator and all mm -hmm. the Gator Bar crew. Oh, yeah. That was nice and chill. Yeah, he was streaming, I saw... <laughs> I saw something. He was doing the you were doing mm -hmm. the noodle challenge, and then some other stuff. Oh yeah, I died. I ate spicy <laughs> noodles and like nearly died. Yeah, I never done that. I don't know if I could. I'd probably die too. I'm not really that good with spicy shit. But um, 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know. There were there some crazy parties. Like, um, a lot of people told me about, because uh, I interviewed, like, a bunch of people now, um, told me mm -hmm. about uh, the Kinetic Party. I don't think you went to that one, but it was pretty wild, apparently. Uh, mm. there's, there's there's a picture that that surfaced that was posted to, to uh, Twitter of uh, nagging a lap dance from Jakey. <laughs> mm, yeah. Spicy. I'll tell you, that was a good party. <laughs> My God. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Uh, this year was a little different than last year's TwitchCon because I made uh, I made business cards and I went around and passed them out to like people at booths and stuff. Oh. Trying to network myself a bit more. Yeah, you gotta network. When you go to Twitch, I feel like a portion of your Twitch time time should be networking. Honestly, even if you're affiliate or a partner, you should be networking, right? It's your well, chance. Well, yeah, because connections are everything, and every not even just Twitch, like every facet of life. Like you know, connections are everything. Like exactly. I remember even before I was streaming full time, like uh, there would be jobs that I would apply for and other people would get them, uh, just cause they knew somebody, right? Exactly. Like, so it's like, you gotta make those connections. You gotta meet people. You gotta put yourself out there. Uh, and with TwitchCon, the first TwitchCon, I was very newly partnered. So I was like, oh, I'll just, this will just be like a vacation, like a nice, like yeah. treating myself after getting partnered. And then, then this year it's like, okay, it's my second TwitchCon, a little more comfortable around conventions now that I've been to one. Like, I should, you know, put myself out there on the floor. Uh, I actually got to stream from the show floor, which was super oh, cool. Oh, okay. Uh, there was a game, uh, one of the games there, uh, or the developers, like, contacted me and were like, hey, you're partnered, you're going to TwitchCon, come stream from our booth. And I'm like, sure. Hell yeah, dude. Which is cool. They enrolled me in their, like, sponsorship program. Mm -hmm. Still waiting to hear back from them on that. But that was a, a weird experience because they had uh, speakers around their booth mm -hmm. that would, um, it would, um, like, broadcast my voice around the booth when people were walking by. So it was a completely different vibe from streaming uh, just from the comfort of my own home to, like, entertaining people, like, in real life, like, right, like, 20 feet away from me. <laughs> it was super fun, though. Would definitely do it again. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't have, like, any experience doing this stuff. I'm just sort of by myself mm -hmm. in my own shit and doing this interview stuff. But, um, yeah, like, uh, I've just heard of so many, like, epic cool stories of people meeting each other there was the viewer chat wall again uh like, like last year they had like the mm -hmm. blackboard and then they filled it up and i don't know it's just kind of crazy yeah the yeah the thing is like people always say all oh, that like there's no reason to go to twitchcon if you aren't partnered or like things like that but it's like there's a lot of things to do and it's like being part of the like twitch community mm -hmm. is like a thing too exactly yeah, like, uh, I don't know, people, um, like, there's a lot of communities, like, even, you can even branch out and talk to, like, people who, I don't know, like, talk to, like, somebody who, do, like, streams a different category and be like, yo, what's up, dude? Like, I've known of... Exactly, like, yeah. I met a few people at TwitchCon, uh, like, we're just sitting around, like, sitting next to someone and be like, oh, what do you stream, you know? And they'll be like, this is only like, oh, I do, like, D&D and &D VR chat, that's, like, my deal. <laughs> Like They're what? Like, oh, Your neat. chant? What's that? Ugh. Explain what you do. Yeah. The hardest thing in life. People are like people are very interested in virtual reality. That's what I found most of the time. Every really? time you say like you're a VR streamer, there always there's always big interest. You're a VTuber. Feel like uh oh man but yeah everybody's interested about vr everyone wants to learn like what's vr mm -hmm. like you know well, that's I... why i'm excited for vr to go down in cost because it means more people will get in well yeah i feel like um vr chat or not vr chat but like just vr in general is like the future of um gaming and just like you know getting to the next level because if you think about it like let's say hypothetically you know, in the next five, ten years, there's going to be, like, MMOs that are just fully VR, like, 
built from the ground up and everything like that's going to be the future or even just role-playing games like imagine like gta mm. but it's vr like everything you do is G is vr so you have to open the door <sighs> drive cars you know rob banks all that shit talk to people punch mm. whatever all there's that rumors that uh the next playstation is going to have a next gen playstation vr Oh, and that's shit. what I'm excited for because when more AAA publishers get involved in VR, it means that we'll start to get AAA experiences in VR. And it's like we've gone through tech demos, we've gone through like we're in like experimental like indie games right now. And I think the next step for VR is like high polished AAA experiences, mm -hmm. which are going to be very cool. Yeah, because right now a lot of uh, VR games are just ports. Like it's like. Oh, Skyrim mm -hmm. was made, like, what, eight years yeah, ago? Yeah, it's like Skyrim VR, and like, like Borderlands oh, yeah. 2 VR. None of these games are made from the ground up for VR. They're just ports, so a lot of them are janked up and yeah. glitchy and stuff like that. They're never meant to be used in VR properly. Mm -hmm. but if, Plus, developing yeah. for VR is a, a completely different skill set. Like, you compare Skyrim VR mm -hmm. to uh, a game that was built for VR, like Blade and Sorcery. Yeah. And it's just like completely different because you can tell which one was made from the ground up for VR. Exactly. I just feel like uh, it's it's the future. I'm I'm really hoping that like I don't know. It's, I I feel like a lot of scary games are going to profit a huge off of that because it's you know now you're in the world mm -hmm. and now you're scared. You know, I think like Paranormal Activity is like really yeah. good, or Visage, and a few other ones are like horror games. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's VR. It's the, the it's the immersion. Yeah, that game's terrible. It scares the shit out of me. Five Nights at VR. Have you ever ever uh, played that one? Oh God, I I fucking I can't do scary shit in VR. <laughs> I've done. Have you, does that mean you never done any like the Huggies dungeons and stuff like that? No, I've done them, but people oh, have okay. had to force me through uh. them. I've done all the horror ma I hate them too. I just do it because it's entertaining for people to watch me get scared. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like if if a full fledged game came out for them, it would be a lot. It'd just be huge, and I feel like the more uh, time is going, because like I think in two years is when VR or for the for the Oculus and the Vive, they release the next like big. Uh, upgrades like they're talking about like the Oculus 2 yeah. which is going to have like um, what do you call it um, depth, depth perception so like when you put your hand really close to your face mm -hmm. and everything else is blurred it's going to have like stuff like that and, like be able to focus and like a lot more higher poly and yeah. uh, all this shit I so. think the Valve Index was the first like major like VR like 2.0 headset yeah I can agree on that like the fact that it has like the big screen and it's like the finger, the tracking. finger tracking on the controllers, like... Valve always makes, like... They don't make things often, but they make good product. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, Boneworks is supposed to come out. So that's gonna be... Like, oh, yeah, Boneworks. The first, like, really good uh, index game. So... Mm -hmm. excited for that or at least watch yeah, boneworks it. is so highly anticipated mm -hmm. people are like it's basically half-life 2.5 so <laughs> if i mean like mm -hmm. let's be real here if they just made like let's say hypothetically ever made half-life 3 like what if they just made it like a mm -hmm. vr title <laughs> they, <laughs> that's how yeah, you sell well, there's your rumors of them working on a uh, a like big vr project at valve which makes sense because half-life has always been like a series that has pushed the technical boundaries of its time, right? Yeah, well, like six. Half Life Two came out in two thousand and seven, and that game is like it does features that like games wouldn't be doing for like years after it, like with all the like physics and stuff and like yep. the graphics. And like Half Life One was like so like big and sprawling compared to other shooters of the time. Yeah, because uh, Half Life Born. Um, I think it's Counter Strike, right? Like they made a bunch of shit out of like Half Life. Mm -hmm. Like they made Counter Strike was a Half Life mod. Team Fortress was a Half Life mod. Yeah. Half Life made everything. Honestly, like a lot of just a lot mm -hmm. of shooters, a lot of good games. So the modding capabilities. So yeah. I'm definitely if if they're actually gonna do something like VR oriented, not just some tech demo. 
it would be huge for them. It, it doesn't have to be Half-Life. It could just be like a different game that just focuses on physics and like climbing and I don't know. Just... Yeah, we've only gotten like little tastes of Valve doing VR stuff. We had the lab when uh, the Vive first came out, mm -hmm. which was just like a collection of mini games. And then recently they released uh, Aperture Hand Lab, which was like a tutorial yeah. for the index controllers, but it was like super polished and well made. Yeah, it's was, it was about like Portal and stuff. Um, I got a question, so we can dive into, um, well, actually, before I ask this question, I was just thinking on the spot here again. Uh, so do you think, like, uh, do you, do you ever play, like, Gary's Mod? No, oh, yeah. What do you think about, like, if Gary's Mod 2 or something like that, or, like, another game that li was like VR Chat but was more sandboxy like Gary's mm -hmm. Mod, but VR-focused? I think we might see more of that coming into VR chat with uh, the Playmaker update at the end of this year. You mean Udon? Uh, we already have like Gmod. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, things like Murder already yeah. in VR chat with like even the present coding. And I've talked to people like uh, Phase Dragon and people like Lakuza who are like really like pushing the bounds of what you can code in VR chat. Yeah. Uh, and. I think when Udon drops, they're going to just go wild and make some, like, next-level stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree on that. Like, I've said it in other interviews. Uh, I do agree, like, that I think, like, once Udon comes out, which is supposed to come out, like, literally a month uh, by the end of this year, so, like... Before month, the end yeah. of this year, yeah. Yeah, so very, very soon. That means that they should be opening uh, the closed beta very soon then because they goes the the plan is closed beta and then some people beta. already have beta yeah. versions of yeah, it yeah, yeah. uh i spoke to phase dragon he has a beta copy of it oh nice yeah i'm wondering if they have it now that means that when it releases by the end of this year maybe they'll already have like maps like polished and like ready to just upload. who knows hopefully they'll have yeah they might have stuff ready if there's a beta mm -hmm. for, like the launch of it maybe we'll see a big because it's a thing it's like i'm not I'm not as excited for, like, the launch of Udon mm -hmm. as I am for, like, three months after Udon is out and people have a chance to make something with yeah. it. I get what you're saying, because, like, when the tools come out, it's not like, you know, you're going mm -hmm. to automatically make a really cool game. It yeah, because takes... I don't make a map, so I'm not, a, like, a programmer, so, so I'm like, okay, cool, now people can make more cool things for VRJet. I make maps. And then I just get really to see what they make. Basic shit like this. <laughs> this doesn't take a lot of effort, though. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm not, I don't know if I'll be able to make some, we'll see how like it works and functions. Maybe I'll make something basic or mm -hmm. something, but, uh, yeah, I just think that when it initially comes out, I think like the people who have access to it will have like cool maps, but I think like for the large community, it's going to take months. Like we might see uh, stuff until mm -hmm. like spring of 2019 or 2020 or, um, summer. Yeah. It's when the really cool shit happens. Hopefully, uh, what happens is something similar to uh like the people who know like what to do will make things easier for people who are getting into it yeah. like um i don't know if you know this but uh phase dragon lakaza and a couple others run a big group called uh vrc prefabs yeah i'm in that discord uh, where basically they give like very super like accessible tools for world creation like systems to put in your world we have like scion lasers climbing prefab to yep. make like maps where you can climb on the walls like stuff like that i'm hoping a similar thing happens for udon where it's just like easy ways to import like games into vr Game chat using yeah. unity playmaker scripts yeah, I'm in that Discord, and, and some of the stuff in this map and some of the other maps that I've made uh, do use that prefabs. Like, uh, pretty much it's like, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's like a Google Doc, and you just download it, and it tells you what it does. It says, like, this is, like, for chairs, and this is for uh, whatever the hell you want. I made the camera system by watching Cyan Laser's uh, tutorial yeah. videos, so... It's, a, it's like someone else did the yeah. hard, like, coding, Yeah. and then you would get to use the tools that they make. Exactly. Um, markers, like these pens in this world are actually one of the only markers that actually work in this game. Like you actually can see them. Remember when markers never worked like in any world besides presentation room? Mm -hmm. Those markers are made by a guy. Yeah, because they'd all be particle trails yeah. and they would be like really scuffed. Well, these ones are made by a, a Japanese guy. 
was from a booth and he just gave it out for free and they actually were just like presentation room markers it took almost two mm. years for markers. oh my god the japanese community for vr chat is living in some kind of post future dude like virtual market yeah like uh, like all the stuff that happened with virtual market 3 like i went to virtual market 2 when it came out and uh, i was like oh it's cool it's like an artist yeah. showcase for people to do their thing but virtual market 3 like they had actual like tech companies in japan sponsoring an event that took place mm -hmm. exclusively in virtual reality which is like that is just wild to me that is the future like that is like fucking like real tangible like things yeah. in the virtual world yeah because i remember going to the virtual market the older one that, that that came out a while ago sorry i was taking a drink um mm -hmm. and um i remember just going there i was just like what the heck is this and then i realized it was like the japanese community it didn't get a lot of traction i think uh, the last one the, uh, the third one it did a lot but i think the second yeah, one the second one you sort of had to be in the know about it. yeah and then i just like i think kimple told me about it i was just like what the hell is this and then um the third one like was way better a lot more organized a lot more structural they made it into a circle so you could go all the way mm -hmm. around like each like, they had like what like 10 versions of the same map but like different you're know, not same map but like you know different maps but like mm -hmm. different booths everywhere it was crazy yeah. I was just like, what the heck? And they had, I, like... I think it was like 300 plus uh, independent creators making stuff for Virtual Market. And then like 40 like big like corporate sponsors uh, like putting into the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask us like you had like it, it, you had good like like you had like recognizable like names like. Too for in, in Japan you had things like yeah you had Seven Eleven like they, they have like a tech branch apparently because they own like tech offices in Japan uh, yeah. and then you have like uh, Samsung like I Takara think? and things like that yeah Samsung yeah they had a bunch of like I was just I, was kind I actually of think like, it was it was Panasonic or Panasonic that was the yeah one yeah, that yeah sponsored like the I was Monics. I was like yeah. what the heck these are like actual like recognizable brands <laughs> in virtual market so you got to think about that for a yeah, minute. It, so bizarre it's like it was like it's the a real company mm -hmm. like putting down the money to sponsor an event that is a limited time event like those virtual market worlds like vanished after the event was gone yeah. because it was a it was meant to because that's what the japanese community likes about mm -hmm. vr they like adding that like basic it kind of like quasi physicality to it like it's a limited time thing like it's if you wanted to explore virtual market you had to be at mm -hmm. virtual market and it's like the items are still available to purchase on booth you can go browse for them but yeah. it's like the fact that like there was a big event and a showcase for it mm -hmm. and companies put real money into an event in virtual reality that's like that's like the verge of the future exactly and like i i I was just nuts to see like going there and then purchasing something. I know a lot of people actually bought models and, and like mm -hmm. weapons and and even just oh, like Oh yeah, I bought a couple models of and assets off of a uh, VCAT. The uh base for my uh Callus Row avatar is a VCAT model. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. What you got to think of though is that like um that you probably like I think on an annual or even more annual, like maybe like every month, they probably have a virtual market that's outside of VR chat. You got to think about that for a minute. They probably have mm. stuff like that probably every, all the time, like virtual markets. They just, VR chat was like a big one that they wanted to like show like once a year. But I feel like they probably have mm. those markets all the time there. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you went to like Japan. Well, it's like you can follow like uh, legitimate like things like on booth mm. and like, you know, creators and they have like showcases, like little mini ones. Mm -hmm. that they just host on the website but like big stuff in vr like that's like awesome like those maps even mm -hmm. though they they were so temporary but they were so impressively built exactly did you know that in those worlds this, the virtual market all every single virtual market world um if you open your menu you can actually drop like a mirror in front of you and also you can text people mm -hmm. and you can teleport to people too and also if you were if you were standing in front of a booth and you had a button on you that if you pressed like the like button it would open up the link to buy that item in your browser like so yeah. you didn't have to like QR save codes. a bunch of qr codes oh, like you had yeah. to the last vcat like virtual market 2 you had to save qr codes and go like do it like 
uh, like afterwards, but like you could just, I just had a bunch of tabs open a booth because I was going around VCAD and just like, that looks cool, like bookmark, like, you know? Yeah, they, they did really, really, uh, really well this time. Like, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know, the, the mm -hmm. seeing the teleport thing and the, and the text, or yeah, the teleport and the text thing, that was like revolution. I was like, oh my God, because he could, I could type yeah, to somebody. Yeah, they sold just that as a prefab too. Yep. It's you can put that in any world now. The chat and the teleport from VKit. Yeah, I was I was talking to um, Cyan Lays and a few others about it. Um, the reason why it's not like in every world, even though it's free, uh, is because it, it does create a lot of lag. So like you noticed that like when you went to the virtual market, where you were, mm -hmm. were you with like twenty people, I wasn't. I was only with like two people, and I was lagging. Uh, so, like... I well, like maybe a group of like ten at most, but yeah, performance did vary. Yeah, for me, it if I wasn't by myself or if, like very few people, it, it did lag a lot. Um, I, that's probably why like the texting and like the the teleport thing are like in a lot of worlds. It's it's a cool idea. Like I want it to be implemented mm -hmm. in this game, but I I do feel that like it's probably pretty laggy to have like forty people try and use it, just spam like the text and stuff. Yeah. Um, someone says in the chat, uh, crazy man. The next step for VR chat actual money transfers like you can press a button to buy something which is will link to your paypal or card i mean technically that's what the virtual market was and they do have plans for a virtual virtual economy in vr chat they already made a blog post about it like not that long ago saying like uh yeah they have a job listing for like virtual currency experts yeah exactly so that's already gonna happen i don't know when it's probably not this year i doubt that but like 2020 probably sometime they'll have like some V bucks or something, VR dollars or something. I don't know how they're gonna do it, but mm. they'll figure it out. Um, uh, Fly Young says, "What do you think of social media today? Specifically, do you think it will survive? Follow up is SM a good way to make real human connection? What's SM? What do you think the future is? The relation? I think he's abbreviating social media. Oh, social it's media. SM. Oh." Um, is, is mm. VR the, the better social tech? I mean, VR chat is social media, right? Like, yeah. that's like here, the most of the work the devs do for the game, it's like, they're not the ones that make maps. They're not the ones that like it's make cool. like, you know, avatars or like optimizations and stuff. Like what their main focus is, is improving VR chat as a social network, Yeah, which is very interesting. Like we have a virtual game that you buy on Steam and will launch on your computer. But the, but it is a chat client, you know? It's VR chat. It's a social network in the virtual world. Yeah, a lot of people make, com weird. make comparisons to, like, Second Life. Because, like, basically mm -hmm. VR chat is, like, Second Life, just VR-focused. Um, the difference is... Yeah, uh, it's like there are games yeah. in VR chat, but they're not, like, the focus. The focus is the social aspect. Yeah. Um, in Second Life, I know which gets a lot, a lot of bad rap, but like the one thing I always wanted to bring up was they have an economy system, which is like linens. You have to pay real world money to like mm -hmm. uh, buy stuff in the game, and you could buy houses. You have to actually pay rent to, to a user for your house and shit. So like you can own like a nice oh, prime man. real estate. Imagine like you own your house in VR chat and you have to pay money every every like week to some dude. <laughs> like holy shit, <laughs> you didn't pay your rent, dude. I'm gonna fucking sell your place now, or I'm gonna kick you out, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about uh, second life. See, I don't think that's the, exactly the route that VR chat is going to oh, go no, down I don't because, think so. like, VR is all open source. Yeah, the thing about second life, I just want to mention too, is that like it wasn't just worlds. It's not like you own just the club. Second life, you mm -hmm. every every place was like a huge island. So like, there wasn't just mm -hmm. like one house on the island there was like a hundred houses and like a strip club and like bars and like clubs and everything like every world like imagine like if you're yeah. like the world was That's like the thing that vr places. chat is uh lacking is like physicality basically like there's no like after you leave an instance in vr chat like that's it. Like yeah. there's no evidence of you ever being there, and every instance is exactly the same for every person who creates it. There's no overlap. Exactly. I I just think like in a perfect. But like world... if I could make like a place in VR chat that was like this is like say like it's a bar or something, and you're like this is the place, 
and everybody who goes through there and maybe it's only 10 people that can filter in through there at a time but it's the same instance consistently and you can't make your own instance of it yeah. that's like the physicality of vr well i see it as like you go to the bar let's say you go to the great pug and you and you walk outside the door and it just like you're not outside on the street and then you walk down and then oh there's the void mm -hmm. club i feel like that just creates the more immersion and like you know yeah, that's that'll be when we're really fucking living in the oasis, dude. Yeah, or you go down and like, all right, guys, let's go to my house, and you have to like get in your fucking car and VR chat and fucking drive it or fly or whatever. So, I just mm -hmm. I just think that's the next immersion level. I get that VR chat can't really do that um, because it's just like trying to fill that shit. Ready into... Player One was just yeah. VR chat the movie. Exactly. Um, I I just feel that well, uh, there's one person that tried to do that. Um, there's an old Japanese world, I forget what it's called, mm -hmm. but they made, like, a giant, like, just flat world, and then every player was given a plot of land, kind of like Minecraft, and then you were told to build something, and they had, like, 150 mm -hmm. different buildings, and it kind of felt like that. You just walk down the street, and you're like, oh, here's this guy's house, like a giant fishbowl, and then you go down in here, and it's like a house, mm -hmm. and there's, like, a cat thing or whatever. It was kind of cool. It was just like, oh. But, like, you would never have, like, 100 people in the world. You only have, like, five. But, you know what I mean? Like, the, the idea is... Yeah. Uh, but I'm asking you to compare it to other social tech that maybe makes some pros versus con conversation points. Oh, um, we're talking about, like, you know, VR, VR chat as a social compared to, like, Twitter and, like, the traditional medias. One of the pros of VR is certainly uh, body language, like hand gestures, yeah. hand movements, like especially me, like IRL a lot, I talk with my hands, so it's like yeah. if I'm gesturing, it adds like a layer to, obviously you can't see mm -hmm. like my full expression because I'm Face wearing tracking. an avatar and we're in a video game but like, you know it's like you get more of a semblance of what I'm talking about mm -hmm. versus if I was like typing to you on Twitter or on Discord because I'm using my voice and I'm using my body language to communicate well, uh, the new Facebook... Facebook is trying to integrate... Because they're, they're making their own soul, uh, VR social game just for Facebook. Kind of like mm -hmm. VRChat. It's literally VRChat, but like kind of like their own thing. And I assume it's going, it might be only Oculus only. But they're trying to like get into like face tracking. So like <laughs> so they're going to know what you mm -hmm. look like when well, you wear your headset It makes sense on. why Facebook would want to do that. Because uh, Oculus did put forward a lot of VRChat's initial investor money. Exactly. With uh, the quest, mm. and then yeah, um... well, uh, the initial like back in 2014, like uh, VR Chat got like a million from uh, Oculus and like a million funding from HTC yeah. to build VR as a platform. And then just recently, and like people got ask like all the time like huh. how VR Chat makes its uh, money. It's like VR Chat is something that like, especially compared to other like. The competition, like I played, uh, fucking what is it? The VR social game made by the Second Life devs, Sansar. Yeah. Yeah. That fuck. Oh my god. People give VR chat shit, but holy moly, compared to that, it, they're years ahead of the competition. And like that's why I think VR chat is like gets a lot of investment money and stuff like that is because it builds VR as a platform. And it helps build a developer's skill set for VR to make things in VR chat, right? Exactly. Like, how many people Unity. have learned Unity. game dev skill sets, like, for Unity, just by making VR chat maps? A lot. A lot of people go to college like, now because of VR chat. Yeah, it, be it makes you become literate in Unity in game dev, and especially literate in building things for VR, which is a good skill. That's that's why mm. people like HTC and Oculus put millions into VR chat. It's not because, you know, it's not because they just want to fucking you know give millions of dollars to fucking anime girls. It's like they want to <laughs> uh, invest in the future of VR as a platform. They make a lot of money though. You gotta like think about how many like VR headsets have been sold because of VR chat. Like how many people mm -hmm. bought VR? Like I bought VR. You bought VR. Like, a lot of people bought VR. We talked VR. about how in uh, January 2018, there was a shortage of VR headsets in Japan. Yeah, and um, 
Vive trackers too. Everyone wanted full body because when people start seeing that, they like fucking sold out that shit. And index... the Vive tracker was a terrible accessory before full body tracking became a thing in VR chat. Like, it was only used. Oh, uh, the Vive uh... tracker wasn't used for anything. It, it was... was used for like screw it onto a like a table tennis racket or something like that. It was actually used for one other game. It was uh, Climby. It was the only mm -hmm. other game that had full body tracking supposedly. But, like, pff, nobody used yeah. it, I don't think. So, yeah, because VR chat uh, has a uh, you know, it's got, got a big user base. So, like, if somebody f somebody found a use for Vive trackers basically in VR chat, there was like, I need and it in the form of full body tracking, exactly. And now, like, we have so many other like games that have added full body tracking, like, Planes. VR chat brought Sorcery. full body tracking, like, into the wider vr space like weird as that sounds exactly the like, games didn't do full body tracking before vr chat did it mm -hmm. now every game's like try like i think like the oculus is trying to like get into full body tracking because like i i never had full body mm -hmm. except the oculus but um i did get the connect the xbox connect because you could jerry rig it Oh, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Never try that. It's a waste of money. But like... Ugh, I remember way back when, like in 2012, watching people use the Kinect to uh, move uh, models in Gary's Mod. Yeah. People, people <laughs> and didn't I remember say thinking yet. that was the future back then. Oh my god. It was, I mean, for VRChat, it's pretty bad. Like, you can't put one leg in front of the other because, like, it can't track. Like, if there's any obstructions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's terrible. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's the worst. Um, actually, so we'll, let's move on to another topic. So uh, I wanted to bring this up. Sorry for like sudden change, but um, I didn't want to get this over with or get okay. get this topic out before I forget. So Callus Row and role playing. So obviously you've been role playing in viewer chat for a mm -hmm. while. More specifically now is Callus Row. You know, you and I are in Callus Row. I got my new outfit <laughs> for the RP, but. Uh, how do you feel about mm -hmm. uh, Callus Raw after three weeks? Uh, tomorrow's going to be the fourth week. Uh, it's been pretty good so far. I think uh, Arcadum has been running a good ship of it. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of VR chat RP is like hard to get right. I think he learned a lot of valuable lessons about it from his first uh, thing knowledge. that he did. Mm -hmm. I was part of that. Uh, yeah. I I still have a few, like, uh, there, I mean, I'm, I'm just fucking skeptical, that is all, because I've seen how fucking bad VR chat roleplay can be when you fucking, <laughs> fucking just don't Dude. even yeah. get me fucking started. But, uh, Arcanum's done a good job so far of avoiding the pitfalls uh, of, like, you know, not having things be scripted not having uh his character be like super central to everything yeah uh, and i guess what just remains to see is seeing if uh, how long that can last you know if people just get uh like you know stagnant with it and then you know nothing will happen well i'm, I'm wondering how long, like when we'll see people like murder each other and like how the repercussions will that will like affect the whole rp like oh shit someone died what the fuck i feel like everyone's gonna be on edge i feel like right now it's just sort of like that's the thing about every every role play scenario like i i've come from a long fucking background of like story writing and role playing because i've mm -hmm. played dungeons and dragons for like 13 years oh, and nice. it's always important to like keep the story moving forward like like just roll it like keep uh -huh. the narrative fresh like always keep doing something yeah. You know, if everybody just sort of gets into their roots in Callus Row, and then they get cozy, uh, they're not going to be anyone doing anything, and then the RP is just gonna die. Well, I think Becky or one of those characters is probably gonna die first. They're just hated by everyone. Mm. <laughs> so, so I think it's eventually gonna happen. Someone's gonna <laughs> die. The thing about though is that I feel like a lot of people fail to realize that role play isn't about. Uh, you have to always win, or it's about creating an interesting story, something that's entertaining, especially if you're a streamer. It's the same. Like, it's a very common issue of like the GTA 5 RP community is that um, some people just like mm -hmm. take it too serious, and they're like, "Oh, I got cop of the cops," and so people like start hating on the cop, like "Fuck you, cops," and like going to their chats and being toxic and shit like that. 
And um, it's not about that. Like, uh, there's a guy called uh, Silent Sentry. He plays, like, literally, like, ten different characters in the GTA mm-hmm. Five community. And, like, he's always about creating a unique experience. And, like, if he if he gets shot, he ha- you know, he starts limping and, you know, he doesn't just run away, you know? Yeah, it's about creating, you know, scenarios. It's about, like, having fun, like, getting to roleplay with more people. It's not just about, like, you know, being... Like, oh, my character is the fucking best and nothing can ever happen to me because that's not interesting at all. Yeah, roleplay is, uh, it's a good medium for games, I think, and VR adds a different layer to it because then there's, you know, that same physicality and body language that I was talking about, about, like, social networking uh, applied to playing a character. I always say, like, role-playing in VR is more like acting. Because <laughs> you're, like, having to move mm-hmm. and act like a character would, as well as just do a voice and make decisions. Exactly. I feel like um, a lot of people don't realize that, like... Um, I just feel like people get stuck into, like, being a god or something that, like, just doesn't die or... or not really mm-hmm. get, you know, understanding that your character has to have, like, a story arc, you know? A lot of people just be like, I'm just going to be the richest, strongest person. I'm basically going to be Superman, but, like, unstoppable. It's just like... Okay, dude. Like, I... Perp- yeah. like, uh, you have to provide yeah. material for people to bounce off of. And um, for Callus Real, like, people pick to be, like, poor on purpose. I'm kind of curious, like, how their character develops. Mm-hmm. Do they, like, start getting, like, rich? Do they, like, become successful? Or are they just going to die off? You know? Like, I could have made my character uh, My character for Callus Row, uh, which was great, is, uh... I sell people robot arms, but make it out of, like, fucking recycled parts so they break <laughs> down and they have to get them repaired. Exactly. For me, I play a mechanic, but nobody owns a car. So now I have to start looking at other mm. things I have to do to make money. So, like, I went to, like, the the clinic, and if they have, like, something broken, I'll fix it. Even though, like, it seems like everybody's a mechanic in the in Cal's row, like, half the people. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. Is there, any, is there anyone that's, like, a ro- roboticist? Like, someone who just, like, works on robots? Uh, I mean, my character does, like, robotics work. Like, making robot arms and robot body parts. I guess, I guess they, they, they can do it a little bit. I bet I meant, like, literally you work on a robot. Like, you mm-hmm. literally fix broken cleaner bots or something like that. Mm. Maybe that yeah, no. Maybe that Dr. Zed guy. What's his name? Mm. He was talking about how he was doing weird stuff to the robots. Because I feel like everyone's just sort of like an ordinary mechanic. Or, like, you, you're different because you do, like, limbs. Mm-hmm. But me... <laughs> I work on cars and nobody owns a goddamn car, so it makes so like I'm gonna yeah. I'm like struggling, but like I don't know. It gives me an opportunity to like to talk to other players and you know mm-hmm. um, figure out other things. Like uh, I don't know. I I stole um, I stole a hammer and traded it for a gun, for example. Mm-hmm. But, or I, uh, one of the things I've I've liked about Calistro so far is that. Uh, it's been encouraging you to go to other players for the solutions of your problems. Like, compared to Forbidden Knowledge, where it was Arcadum's character at the center of everything. Exactly. Uh, and the solution to every problem was uh, Arcadum's character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I just didn't like that aspect. I guess I guess understand mm-hmm. that some stories and stuff like that and roleplay work around, like, a central character, like a main protagonist, and everyone is, like, a side character. Um, but for mm. Callus Row, it's a lot. I, I just like it a lot more because everybody's their own independent, and you can build relationships with whoever you want. It's more organic. Yeah. yeah. So like, you start building like your own little like friends group, or like people that back you, or deals, or antagonists, or enemies. So. Yeah. Like for example, I've never talked to like anyone from like the sewers. I've only done like the top mm. people. I just, for me, my character doesn't really have a yeah, purpose. Yeah, the Undercity. To, yeah, I, I don't have, like, a purpose to go down there. But if I did, I would go down there. Like, my character uh, has sort of, like, set rules, right? It just doesn't make sense if I'm just going to go, like, I'm going to go to the Undercity mm-hmm. now <laughs> for absolutely no reason because I feel like it. So, yeah. 
there's there's certain things that um make it interesting or like people getting injured and go to the clinic like i have to whisper and run role play and i do that because uh <laughs> my parents go to bed like really early and so i have to be quiet so i made it into my character that i have like damaged vocal cords so mm -hmm. i just like whisper all the time it's just like sort of like a flaw but then um i go to the clinic to like get pills and like treatment for uh my throat because sometimes i can't talk mm -hmm. and sometimes i can't so like it's basically depending on uh if i can talk or not and just revolves around it makes me it gives me a purpose to go to the clinic like all the time so then i like end yeah. up interacting with like the doctors there and then going around and <laughs> doing stuff like that i remember the first day of callus row the first day of callus row the first interaction with another player i had was with the guy who runs the arena and I told him, if anybody loses a limb in the arena, send him to me. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, I wasn't there first week. I was only there second week, third week, and I'll be there tomorrow mm -hmm. um, for fourth week. But, um, yeah, I was actually really surprised that there's a fight first week and second week, third week, there wasn't. I'm actually surprised. I thought it was going to take mm -hmm. a while for him to actually get into fights, but, yeah. I don't want to fight every week, because I feel like it's, like, excessive, but, like... You know, last week was kind of more chill. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, like, the whole, like, what was it, like, the freaking corp people, the Mars people are showing up, and they, like, killed the dude. Yeah. I was like, that was not smart. I watched it happen. I just ran away. I was <laughs> like, what the fuck? I was like, why would you kill a corporate dude? Like, they're going to come for you. I'm, at least I'm not related to it, so I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, um, you know, as the RP gets going and really starts branching out. I think it'd be uh, interesting to see how it develops and stuff like that. It's been good this far, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like... Well, here's the thing, though. I also, there's a lot of eyes on it, too. So, like, there's a lot of um, mm -hmm. people outside of um, VR chat that are even watching it. Like, a lot of, like, mm. older streamers that used to play VR chat or just other, like, role-playing communities are actually watching it. They're like, huh, they're really interested mm. in how it is and they might want to be interested in, like, coming in the second wave. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we've been going for just over an hour and I like to keep it, like, you know, just just around, like, an hour-ish. So, um, if there's any questions from the chat for anyone... Yeah. Um, we'll take them. If not, I always have like a, one or two extra questions I can dish out real quick. And then after that, um, I give you the floor. So I give you like a minute to like, you know, plug anything you got going on, projects, stuff going on. And then, uh, I'll wrap it up. It's kind of crazy how like an hour goes by so fast. Yeah. But yeah, I, originally I was going to do these like 30 minutes and then I was like, that's not enough time. So I started doing these like an hour, but I want to go... Really mm -hmm. beyond an hour ish like max was an hour 30 because like shit dude I think, yeah. I think one of them was like two hours i was like what the fuck but um d oh yeah i have a question i can ask um do you remember how you and i met sure uh no i don't i think i met it must you. have been so long ago i think i met you because of lele Oh yeah, that makes sense. A lot of people in earlier, like the early days of VR chat, I met through Lele. Yeah, because Lele, uh, she used to play. Well, she's like switched her schedule now. But back then, whenever I got at my time at mm -hmm. like twelve or like eleven or like twelve at like night, um, she was on, and like nobody else was on. It was like Lele, Anubis, you. Uh, who else is in that lobby? Um, Proxy. Mm -hmm. Uh. Tyrus, all those people. Yeah. So that's how I met you because of there. And <laughs> when I first met, I was like, "Who is this guy?" I was like, "Who's this blonde guy?" Because <laughs> we were always went mm. to the presentation room. We were always just drawing or something. But that's how I met you. Yeah, and I was still Kenny K. I was like, "What's up, brother?" And then eventually, um, I guess it started like really developing. Um, because of the season four role play, and then yeah, mm. and then um, yeah, that's 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 how we met from from Lele. Not a question, but I really enjoyed this. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yes, that is Cypher. I don't know. I'm just reading chat. I'm just just saying stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I guess one other question I can I can say I, I always say I have backup stuff in case because sometimes people like are like I don't know what sure. to ask them, dude. 
So, I have always stuff, like, written down. Um, so, what is one thing you would like to change about VRChat or add a feature to this game? Oh, 100%. I say this every time. Uh, I would love to add uh, active web panels into VRChat. Like, a, like a Tabletop Simulator, if you've ever played that. Uh, because I'm a fucking dirt, like a big fucking dweeb for Dungeons & Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I fucking, like, I will, do, I would do anything to be able to play D&D in VR chat, like, smoothly, and have a good way to keep track of character sheets and stuff, so, like, if there was a way that I could have it up in a web browser in a VR chat world, oh, that would be the next step. I mean, if you have over a OVR toolkit, you can kind of do that. Yeah, but... Uh, that's like uh, that's like extra steps. Like I want the integration to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. seamless in in VR chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, crazy says, crazy man says, Cypher, what's what nicknames do people give you that kind of messes with you a bit? No, oh, people have so much trouble pronouncing my name for some reason. I've heard Sky Fry, Ski Free, Stir Fry, Sky oh, yeah. Free. Mm. I get all it. of them yeah people, i've heard of all people used to i remember some people saying like uh mm -hmm. to me they, they came they said like that one rebellion i was like how the fuck did you get that out mm -hmm. of there or like what one person said one yeah. that rebel i was like what the fuck dude that was like <laughs> what are you doing dude i actually plan to just change my name to straight up just rebel like r-e-b-l so just make it mm. quick and simple um, I think I think that's it. I think that's all the questions. Uh, yeah. I think. We'll wrap it up here. So obviously the camera's already on you. So if you want to like plug anything, you know, your Twitter, mm -hmm. your Twitter, your YouTube's, Instagram, whatever you got going on, projects you're working on, D and D stuff. Sure. I uh yeah I stream VR chat every weekday. I stream D and D once every Tuesday. That involves Lele and some of the other people from VR chat. Um. Uh, I'm working on my own VR chat RP that is going to be coming up soon. I'm currently Ooh. writing for it, uh, and nice. I'm doing Callus Row every Friday. Awesome. Well, to wrap it up here, I appreciate you, SciFry, for stopping by and being a part of this interview and everything, and hope that um, your, your RP that you're starting is going to be awesome, dude, because I'm always down. Like, I don't... Like, I'm, I'm not in every rp or anything like that but i do like watch them mm. and it's always interesting to see like what people come up with because you have to create all these stories and backgrounds and interactions a lot of people have to make worlds and stuff so i'm obviously very in interested to see what you come up with my man so yeah thank mm. you so much like i said i'm the host i one rebel and you're my guest i fry and like i said guys i do this almost every single day these interviews late night rebel at seven o'clock p.m eastern standard time so yeah thank you so much mm. Yeah, I'm gonna log off your check because it's my day off uh, and I need to yeah. get this headset off of me. Um, one last thing <laughs> before you go. Um, it mm -hmm. just takes like five seconds. I just need to take a selfie of you and then because I add them all to the wall outside there and then. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah this, sure. It just takes like no time uh, to turn off the chairs there because yeah, when I do emotes and shit, like it just fucks up. So. There we go. I'm actually taller than you. Wow. <laughs> A big lady. Wowie. Wowie, dude. All right, we'll take one more. Always take two, by the way. Oh, okay. There you go. I got it. Yeah, I always say take two because I feel All like right. whenever people take pictures and shit, they, uh, you know, fuck up on the one. Anyway, I'll see you later, my man. Yeah, Enjoy I gotta get off. this headset off of my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get you, yeah. man. See ya.